All right, starting off from, uh, basically from the first uh, opportunity we had as a staff to get together uh, really this past December, January, and then uh, once we got an opportunity to talk to our players, you know, we just wanted a, a chance to, at this point of the season to be able to accomplish our mission, which is win our bowl game. And uh, these men have bought in and worked extremely hard to put themselves in positions to have that opportunity. And uh, we're excited about the week of preparation we have in front of us. I think our guys uh, understand uh, what's on the line. And I think we'll be very excited to be, be able to go out and prepare well this week together as a team. Each and every week, I say it all the time in this conference, uh, there's a lot of quality opponents. Uh, UTEP is a team that's uh, been in a lot of games uh, that could very easily have been a team and in in a ball eligible team. Um, you know, they, they've, uh, you know, some things have happened throughout the games that maybe um, cost them, but uh, they got some good players. They're, uh, they play very physical. Uh, they got an unbelievable running back on the defensive side of the ball. Schematically, they're very similar for what we do. Uh, they're, um, and they can bring some different pressures, uh, uh, pressures from a lot of different areas. I think schematically they're sound, and it'll be a great challenge. It'll be their senior day. They'll be extremely excited to play uh, against us. And, uh, we got to do a, a great job of uh, preparing this week so we can give ourselves the opportunity. And that's what we're looking for. Open it up. Is there an even bigger sense of excitement this week, knowing that you're one step away from? attaining that bowl status? I think they've, uh, you know, when your back's against the wall, it takes a number of guys stepping up, understanding, uh, you know, what we can do as a football team if we, if we do. And it, and it takes all three phases. you got to play well. And the other night wasn't uh, the cleanest game I've ever been a part of, for sure. But they found a way to win. And it's no different this week. In the last two weeks of the season, again, your back's against the wall, and it's pretty much winner take all. And they understand what's at stake, but it, it still comes down to, um, you know, what we've what we've done uh, throughout the season and what our core values are of being selfless, tough, and disciplined. And that's truly uh, what's most important about winning this football game. Sometimes people will squeeze a little tight, uh, you know, try to pull the rope a little bit too hard. And that's exactly the opposite thing we should be doing. Uh, we need to stay focused on who we are, uh, what we believe in, and what we know and how to prepare to win a football game. What would it mean for this program to, to win six games this season and get to a bowl? I think it, it, it would mean a lot. Uh, it would mean a lot for, again, through the challenges of having a new head coach come in and a new staff uh, being able to develop relationships with these men, it just validates that we're on the right track to do some very special things. But just like any anything, just because you're knocking at the door doesn't mean you're there. And we still have a lot of work to do. But it, it's important because it, it validates pretty much the track we're on and what we believe in. and, and uh, yeah, so that's important. When you came in here, you said it at your first press conference, your goal was to win a bowl game this first year. At that point, you hadn't had a chance to evaluate your players. You obviously know a lot more about your situation than you did then. Was, was there a point along the way that you remember realizing that that was a realistic goal and you really had the pieces in place to make that happen? I felt like with the staff we brought in, uh, having seen some tape and, and understanding what we had, uh, I, I felt very good uh, about the possibilities. If we built those relationships up quick enough, if everybody bought in and, and really pulled the rope in the same direction, uh, there's no doubt in my mind we could accomplish the mission. I don't know if a lot of other people felt that way. Maybe some people thought I was crazy, and that's okay. I understand that. But I'm very confident in our staff and our players and our abilities. 
to get the job done. Again, still gotta, uh, we, we still got to have another great preparation. And again, just because you're there doesn't, knocking doesn't mean that, uh, just means we've given ourselves the opportunity. What's the Mason status? Um, well, I'll know more after today's practice, to be honest. I, I think uh, he's still a little bit sore over the weekend. He was there, if need be, in an emergency situation. Probably could have played. Wouldn't have known until he really got out there. And so I'll know, I'll know more after today. I feel, I, feel, uh, I feel positive, but you never know. I mean, it's kind of one of those situations. Some of it's just pain, toler or pain tolerance, and he's a tough kid. But at the same time, you, you got to be careful, and you don't want to do something that puts him in a bad situation. Uh, what's more important is his future and not for a week. You kind of lean it towards starting Alec this week, or? Oh, yeah, absolutely. After getting a chance to look at the film, uh, what did you uh, feel about the way that your uh, Willie Ivory and, and your running backs were able to do to fill in for, for Jeremy? Yeah, I thought they did a nice job. You know, it, it was uh, Tuck went out early, so he didn't end up coming back. And so the depth there was really shaky. And, you know, guys had to step up. I thought Willie was solid other than his ball security. And that's something, again, we got to continually stress with him. But I thought he ran extremely hard. He made a, <laughs> he made a cut on the goal line that uh, was pretty impressive. And I thought he was, he was in it. I mean, he was, his mind was in the game. Uh, he understood what his job was going to be. And overall, I thought he performed uh, well. And that's something we need. I mean, we got to continue to run the ball well. It takes pressure off a lot of different positions when we're able to do that, and it opens up uh, some different things in the pass game. Who else did you ask about? Is that the only guy you asked about? Yeah, just filling in for Jeffrey. Yeah. Yeah. Thought he did nice too. Will those guys be available this week, Jeffrey, Tyrion, and, and Willie, or you know? Uh, Jeff has an, uh, a chance. And some of that's going to be on the uh, the week. It's it's going to be a game time decision. And again, it's going to be a very similar situation, uh, you know, with Mason. I'm not going to. I'm going to make sure that we're going to do the right things by those young men as well, and not putting them in jeopardizing situations. But at the same time, if they're able and willing, uh, they'll be ready. I'm just not sure yet. After looking at the film, do you feel like that was the best game for the offensive line all year? No. Overall, no. Uh, I thought we did some really good things in the first half. Uh, I think uh, let's let's be very clear. I, I think they have uh, been a group, probably the one group that I would say has really come a long way. I mean, if you got to talk about a group, that that group right there. I love the way they work. I love the way they get better every week. Uh, again, we, we had to flip it around a little bit again last week uh, with Alex down. So there's been a lot of adversity through that room throughout the entire season. And I'm extremely proud of the way they've handled it and worked. Uh, Coach Davis, again, does a tremendous job with those young men. And they uh, work hard as well. So uh, I thought they played well. Uh, overall, as a team, I thought we did I thought we played about, um, I thought we played really well in the first half. Again, the second half got very undisciplined. Uh, guys trying to uh, do a little bit too much, not doing their job, uh, not being accountable. And, and we had to uh, find a way to win because of that in, in the fourth quarter. Um, but overall, I thought we played a good first half. I, I, I wasn't very excited about the second half. You had a couple guys that were suspended last week. Are they back this week? No. Uh, they won't be with us the rest of this year. So will you and Terry for the rest of this year that those guys won't be back? As a, again, I, I, uh, I, take, uh, I'll, I take our core values and 
our team rules very seriously, and we're going to hold guys accountable. And again, uh, I'm not going to waste my time on it right now. That includes a potential bowl game? Absolutely. By UTEP, you mentioned it briefly. I mean, that running back seems like he's a real dynamic player, one of the best playmakers in the conference. Is that really where the strength of their team lies? Yeah, it is, and uh, he uh, he's good. He's really good. And there's they run the football extremely well, and I think schematically they do a great. They know how to run the football. Um, they know they don't just run runs to run them. They uh, they're going to find their numbers, find their angles, and. They do a great job of blocking it up, and, the, and he does a great job of, you know, pressing and, and running off his cut or his uh, his uh, running off the defender. He does a great job. And again, overall, I think it's I think it's a combination of him uh, being a special back, uh, how well they're coached up front, and their scheme. You know, McIntyre kind of came out of out of nowhere last week. You know, he's somebody you hadn't seen all year. You, you know, you're a little short. And you put him out there, and he seemed like he did some good things for you. Was that, you know, where did he come from, and, and why did you feel comfortable putting him out there? Well, he's been with us and repping. Uh, you know, we 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 rep a lot of guys throughout practice for what we do. Uh, those receivers do a, a lot of running um, throughout practice, and so you're not you're not gonna, just going to get through practice with four. And even eight at that time. So we rep a lot of different guys, um, and we felt comfortable that uh, he would know exactly what to do, and he would go out there and, and do his job uh, full speed. And that's exactly what he did. You know, when his number was called on, he was uh, he was fired up. And again, I knew I could trust him. And at the end of the day, that's what you're looking for: guys that you know are going to do their job. You know, we talked about this a little bit earlier in the year, but you guys have come so far defensively. How much do you attribute that to the job your two coordinators have done this year? A lot of it. I think uh, they're special together. I think they complement each other very well. Um, you know, they're, they're not really similar in their backgrounds of what they've done. And so I think uh, it's not always the, if you get guys like, it's not always the perfect marriage when, um, when that happens, but just their personalities together. Um, but both of them have no egos. Uh, coach their kids hard, man, and they do a tremendous job. I can't say enough about uh, those those two and again our entire defensive staff there's great chemistry they, they have great chemistry with the, the, the men and we've come a long way and we still have a long way to go but there's no doubt in my mind uh, with their leadership uh, we'll get there you mentioned that they've got different personalities what, what is it about each of those guys that makes them different I wish you'd be a fly on the wall yeah. at times uh, you know it's I can't even explain. I mean, I'd be sitting here trying to explain. I can't even explain, I, I, you know, but uh, the thing that uh, they both are is, again, um, they're extremely sharp. Uh, they know, uh, and again, they have no ego. So they can, they, they work well together on figuring out the best way to put our men in successful situations. That's our job as coaches. We're teachers and, and making sure that we put them in positions to have success. And it's, it's challenging at times because, um, you know, with different guys' backgrounds, with my background, it, or let's take Graham Harrell, for instance, with his background. Um, you know, we're probably doing some things that uh, he's not as comfortable with. And, but at the end of the day, uh, Graham's the same way. It's not about having an ego. It's not about letting your pride get in the way of what gives us the best chance to win a football game. And I think that as coaches, Sometimes that's one of the hardest things to do, you know, especially as coordinators and with different stats or different numbers or it's a look at me business at times. And at the end of the day, it's what's best for the team. And I think uh, our staff does a tremendous job of, uh, of doing that. What made you comfortable with that, 
situation is it's a little unusual. You know, you have co-coordinators there. You don't see that all the time. What was it about those two guys that you thought this was going to work out so well? Well, uh, the, the one thing is, the first thing is me, um, you know, making sure that they fit what I believed in, what our core values are, and making sure they're a good fit for me. And then understanding when I know that they were a good fit for me, getting those guys together and seeing if, because really the X's and O's thing, that's, that's almost, if you don't have ego, that's almost the easiest thing. More, more so it's, it's do they believe in the same things that I believe in and how well does that fit each other? And, um, you know, it's more about relationships and personalities than, than as much as it is X's and O's. I mean, there's a lot of, look, there's, there's so many systems out there that are great and they're all, they're all beneficial in their own ways. They all have their strengths and weaknesses. So as long as our players are on the same page and they understand it, they're all good. It's a matter of teaching those men how to execute it. And that's the challenge. It's not so much about what you do. It's are we able to coach it well? Is that maybe the biggest? Or has that been a huge part of the what you guys have been able to do this year, just the dramatic improvement you've made defensively this season over last year? Yeah, again, I, I think, <laughs> yes, to answer your question, yes. Uh, I mean, there's going to have to be some improvement not only on defense, but offensively. I think, again, um, I don't really look at last year's numbers, but they were both in very similar situations. And so making improvement on both sides of the ball uh, were key. You know, I think offensively, um, you're more than doubled their, you know, your point total from last season. So, which is probably one of the top in the country. So I think, and defensively it's the same. So I think it takes uh, is, again, that's, at the end of the day, it's still not our standards for defense either. It's not our standards for offense. Um, we still have a long way to go, but you can you can only do as much as as again new systems and coaching and getting uh, getting the right guys in the right positions. And year one in, in the in the system, I think overall uh, we're improving. We're not where we need to be, but we're improving. Good. Thanks, Coach. Happy Thanks. Thanksgiving to y'all. Appreciate you guys. Thanks.